Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. And today I have uh, another care collab. Well, actually, I should say we have another care collab for you guys. And it's about this uh, beautiful uh, orchid with the uh, beautiful orange blooms we see here. It's the golden peacock. And one, uh, yeah, I found it quite a beautiful plant and not that difficult to grow. So I'm really uh, was looking forward to making a care collab about this one. I have this one for about three years now, I think. It was one of my first uh, orchids that I uh, bought when I decided to uh, yeah, increase my uh, my orchid collection. So, uh, but this one, uh, yeah, I saw it um, at Rick L's channel, and he already explained that uh, it's it's kind of an easy grower, and it likes it really likes to bloom, and the blooms stay on quite long. So that's uh, very beautiful, uh, of course. But before I dive in uh, even further, I just wanted to mention the other participants for this uh, care collab. Uh, at first we have uh, Teresa's Corner. Then we have Roger's Orchids. And uh, then we have Ninja Orchids. So the four of us today are uh, making a care collab for you guys. I hope you will enjoy them uh, all. And uh, let's, uh, let's see, and I think it's uh, nice to compare them a little bit, uh, because we don't uh, grow in the same uh, climates. And uh, yeah, sometimes uh, we do get a little bit um, different information there, different growers. But maybe you uh, hear, hear quite a few things that are very similar about this orchid. So um, I have them in, uh, in my greenhouse, as you can see probably. I'm going to back up a little bit. If you've never been here before, but I have a greenhouse and an orchid room. This one is uh, in the Cattleya Alliance, so it's really uh, liking some light. It doesn't need uh, incredibly much light, like these guys are giving, getting them much. This one is, um, yeah, like uh, as you can see here on this shelf, so a little bit further away, but it still, uh, still blooms. And uh, I think that's good. And before I'm going to talk about uh, the plant even a bit more, I have some footage uh, from, from a few days back because I had a little problem uh, with, the, with the blooms. Well, actually I started filming uh, the blooms opening because they have uh, quite a bit of different color. But anyhow, I'm going to show you uh, those clips and then we will back to the, uh, to the plant, in, uh, the complete plant, let's, let's put it like that. So yeah, this is a little bit earlier filmed before I do the actual care collab. But I just wanted to show that uh, these blooms are, um, when they open up, they are a bit darker than uh, when they're getting a little bit older. So I thought this is a nice opportunity to uh, let, show you guys. Um, as you can see, I now have, since today, three buds opened. And um, we have also that branch here. I'm not sure if this will be open uh, completely or fully when we do the care collab, but uh, like I said, I just wanted to do a quick uh, video about uh, when these are just starting open. Let me try to get it better in, in focus. I hope you can see the difference. This, this one is already a little bit lighter color-wise. This one as well. Then the first one. And now we are about a one week later and you can see now I think that they turned up a quite a bright orange and especially when you look at this one next to it you can see now really clearly the color differences there when they just start open and when they are here and also this this bloom that is was uh, already open is uh, bigger than this one in the back so that's uh, that's something that this one does. Uh, I must admit, when it opens, uh, when it's uh, lighting up its blooms, I like it a bit more. And my camera doesn't get it uh, very well, but it's in real life brighter. It's a deeper orange, I think. Um, so that's uh, for now for the blooms. And I wanted to film this now just to show the difference here, but also I don't know if I can get them in focus, I try, uh, sorry, maybe I should do it like this, don't know if you can see them, 
it's hard to make the screen, but I have aphids on this one as well. So I have to treat it with alcohol, and I will do it right now. But I thought, first I'm going to film this, because this may take out the blooms. But, uh, and I'm not finished with the care collab, the complete care collab, as you uh, may notice. And I'm filming this in uh, separate parts, just to, uh, because of the blooms. I wanted to show the difference there. And uh, right before I started filming, I uh, discovered the aphids. So uh, I have to deal with it. And I will be here in, in uh, a few days, and we will have a look again uh, with the blooms. It's nice to include it. Um, there are whoops, three. I don't know if you can see. Oops, see them just above my fingers. Those little nubbins, points, pointy things there. Those are the aphids. But anyhow, so we can uh, follow this along. What happens when we spray alcohol on it? And uh, yeah, I hope at least we're gonna get rid of those aphids. They're not very hard to uh, yeah to get rid of the blooms, but they are keeping coming back and coming back. So it's uh, really annoying. So yeah, I now I'm going to treat the blooms. So I thought I'd just uh, come back quickly. Um, uh, if you hear some noise in the background, it's raining while I'm filming this. But um, anyhow, I just uh, give this a uh, really soak. You may, can, may see the glare on that uh, lip here Oops. Uh, of uh, alcohol. It's uh, rubbing alcohol and on the bottle it says 96%. And I must admit, I just took a sip and it's very strong. No, I'm kidding, you guys. I, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I never do that, of course. But um, yeah, 96 apparently. I don't think you need that high of percentage of alcohol, but I just had, had that one. And um, yeah, I give them a uh, drink and I hope they will be gone. It's so sad because it will cost you your blooms. And you can see here, right above my thumb, this spike stopped growing and I think I now know the reason why. Luckily we do have some buds here on that uh, branch as you can see. So we will have some uh, more blooms. And um, yeah, so that's what I did. Now I thought um, I'm filming this in uh, this moment at the 9th of August. And we have some time before the, we do the care collapse. So I thought I will come back in to this in uh, let's say about uh, three days. And we can see what happened to the blooms. If they're still here or if they start to fading earlier, or something like that. So I thought that's a, a little nice extra to uh, include in this care collab, I think. So I will be back and we will have a little update on uh, how this uh, continues. So yeah, some problems on the blooms. That's why these bots did fail and probably this one as well. It's, uh, it's drying up, I can see that already, so it's not in focus, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, it's sad. But I still have some blooms. And I didn't know that, but this one opened up um, this morning, yesterday a little bit, and then this morning, I'm sorry. You can now probably see it better. But you now have three blooms with a different color. So you can see they go from dark to a bit lighter here, and then the lightest in front. So it's a nice transition they go through color wise and at the end the colors are very beautiful and you can see now the marks on the lips we have some dark markings here edges that's because uh, the little creatures eat uh, quite a lot of these blooms did their damage but I think they are all dead now let me check quite quickly yeah so I think uh, I did get rid, uh, rid of them but anyhow, let's try to zoom in a little bit, because this one has a beautiful lip. I try to get it in focus. Yes, almost. Come on, camera. I think it's quite in focus now. Yeah, I think it. Uh, but you can now see this the the mottled uh, lip, and I think that's very beautiful. It's a nice shape of flower. It's not that big. But it's a beautiful orange, bright olive color with those uh, little darker red uh, mottled um, spots, uh, and especially the, uh, those are especially formed on the lip. Uh, I see a few of them, a bit softly on the on the, um, the sepals and the the petals. Just yeah, only on the petals, I believe. But anyhow. 
It's so uh, most of them, uh, the sepals and petals are uh, completely orange, and then you have those beautiful spots there. And yeah, I think it's a very uh, bright and happy uh, flower. It can branch, as you can see. It likes to, uh, if it uh, really enjoys, it likes to uh, to branch the flower spike. And like I said earlier on, it uh, really blooms for uh, several weeks. So if you want to have an easy grower that likes to bloom and you like orange, well, this is probably uh, some plant that you should have. It's uh, like we said, the golden peacock. Beautiful name. And uh, this is the plant itself, the bulbs. Uh, I decided to take it out and put it on my orchid table so we can have a better look because uh, there are some other plants in front of it. So uh, let's have a look and we can have a look inside of the pot as well. So well, here we are in my orchid room on my uh, up and unpotting table. So let's have a closer look at the uh, plant itself. As you may have noticed, it seems that I have here and there and someone there, new growths, but I must admit they are been there for quite a while. I have even a rotting um, new growth. They stopped growing. I don't know uh, what happened. It was way before uh, this one, uh, this new growth was uh, here. So they stopped and then it made this growth and that obviously matured and it looks even almost bigger than the rest as far as I can see. But why I did that, I have no idea. But this one is obviously blooming. This is a pretty uh, uh, nice new growth, new cane, that is almost I think at the size that it can be. I, I have a feeling that it could be a little bigger even more, just a little bit I think. But that's just from what I see on other channels who, uh, who obviously have the same plant. Um, it's a fairly small plant, it can grow uh, quite quite big but very clustered so it has cl uh, I mean by that it has a lot of canes but it will not go in enormous uh, size wise it will you can keep it manage to keep it in a pot quite quite easily I, I think as I see the growing habit and I like to turn it around a little bit so if I have a new growth here and the light source was coming from there I just can uh, turn it a little bit let it grow to the to the towards the light and then turn my pot again so it will make a little bit of a curve so I can really keep it in uh, inside of the pot if that does make sense I think it, I, I hope it will <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a happy plant it's not uh, not asking much just a regular care I think it doesn't mean need much fertilizer that is something I uh, I do with all my uh, my orchids I don't give them much fertilizer it's a little bits so uh, yeah it's quite easy and I have it in uh, as you already saw in cell watering setup and um, here are uh, some roots let me bring it in a little bit closer as you can see it's not afraid to make the roots and it uh, makes me always uh, very happy we already have the new roots coming in from the new growth they traveled a little a little while to the uh, end of the end of the pot and then they decided to go in so that's uh, that's very beautiful of course and we have even more newer roots here so yeah this one is uh, doing uh, fine but what I like uh, like I uh, mentioned quite often what I do is I measure my pots I don't show that always in my care collection but I thought for this one I'm going to show it again so what I have is a TDS meter and I'm going to measure the water this plant is standing in and I will put it on hold so you can check it with me and we get a reading from 150 I'm sorry for the glare I try to avoid it 150 that's okay I uh, like not to go over the 200 so as long as my readings are uh, below 200 I'm uh, fine with that and it's uh, fairly uh, dusty but it's also it's not only the dust it's also the um, the powdery stuff that I use uh, with algae and stuff I have it in my uh, fertilizer video so if I don't forget I will uh, link that video if you want to know more about it and also I have my calcium powder in here and it stays um, like a powder for quite some long uh, quite a long time so therefore you see uh, stuff floating it almost looked like uh, dust from the media maybe a bit is dust but not that much because I well, like I said they already have this one for about three years so I this should have quite a uh, quite dust free pot 
so that's uh, set. Anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost forget to me uh, measure the pH, but uh, so yeah, like I said, I have the P uh, parts per million, ppms, that's okay. And then I like to check, and I do this every three months, with all my arguments, so I have them in groups, in sections, because otherwise I uh, would have uh, quite a lot of work, but I try to do it in one week, all of them. And yes, it may sound quite a lot, but it's doable. Once you get a hang of it, it uh, goes very quickly. And then I like to check my, um, my pH level in the pot. And uh, I was talking about that calcium powder, I use that to uh, keep the pH uh, around 7 or, uh, or even a little bit higher. So I mimic the system. So I water my plants with a uh, less pH, let's say around 6 or 6.3, something there. And then it will go up during the week and then I will give them new water with a lower pH. So they have a bit of a range of pH uh, to choose from basically to uh, uptake their uh, fertilizer. Well, let's have a look, put it on hold, and this one is about, as you can see, 7.3. I like to uh, have the pH uh, between, in the, in the inside the reservoir, just to be clear, uh, between 7 to 7.5. That's, uh, that's uh, good for me. I can see, as you saw, this plant has plenty of roots, so it doesn't ma mind this level of pH. That doesn't mean that this is a good pH level. Like I said, for most fertilizers, for most ingredients of your fertilizer, they need a little less, a little lower pH, I should say. And therefore, uh, we tend to uh, water with a lower pH, uh, working uh, of growing them in self-watering pots or um, semi-hydroponic. So that's what I mimic by, uh, yeah, uh, do uh, increase the level of pH inside the reservoirs. So I put a plant back on a shelf, and uh, yeah, this is basically in, in, in a not shelf my uh, growing system. Uh, for the uh, for the ones who are fairly new to my channel, I have uh, quite some videos. Uh, I think about the system. So if you want to know more, I call it my customized self-watering system. So uh, because I changed it here and there, but what I like is the feeling of uh, having the control about the reservoir. And that says something about me as a person, of course. I know I, I am a bit of a control freak. Uh, I don't think it's too much. It's not uh, that it's, it's bothering people or any, any kind. But I know I have a tendency to uh, yeah, really enjoy when uh, things go like uh, I thought it would go, etc. I know it's not always uh, helpful, useful, but just, uh, just who I am. And uh, it's not, like I said, it's not bothering me in, in, in daylight. But I think you can see it a little bit back in my growing system. I uh, must admit, I like to know what's going on in the reservoir. And on the other hand, it keeps me uh, in control about the system. So I fairly quickly, it's, it's like I said, every three months, I fairly quickly know if something is going downhill in a pot. So yeah, it's maybe a bit of a control freak uh, uh, part of me, but um, oh yeah, this is this is my phone. So uh, if you thought what's there, that was my phone. Anyhow, um, so that's a little bit uh, yeah who I am, but it really works. And uh, like I said, yeah, if you you uh, detect problems in your pots, it's I think most of the time fairly fairly handy to be there in time because you can adjust it. Uh, uh, yeah, straight away, and it probably save you do, from doing, uh, in this case, a lot of damage on your roots. So therefore, I really like this setup. And uh, if you enjoy it, if you want to know more about it, um, well, maybe you want to subscribe to this channel. I really try to uh, explain it more and keep uh, posting videos so we can uh, see this uh, system progressing through the years. I hope that's the plan. And um, yeah, like really like to talk about it and to share uh, with you guys. So, that uh, just I would like to, uh, wanted to add in my, my video in this Scare Collab. If you have any questions or suggestions, please uh, leave them in the comment section. I will uh, come to them as soon as I can and try to answer them, of course. But uh, for now, thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye!